Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I am Sasha K. Matnish. I am from Jamaica, and I'm here pursuing my Master's of Divinity at the Eldorado Hills Main Campus. Welcome, student. And I am, I am here to share with you today on leadership and spiritual formation. Let us pray. Father, you are worthy to be praised and there is none like you. God, we search all over, still could not find anyone great like you. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And nothing, God, is impossible for you to do, God. I pray over the student, God. I pray over their family, their siblings, their ministry, God. Lord, I pray that you'll continue, oh God, to anoint them. Continue, oh God, to encamp around them, Father. We come against every plan of the enemy that rises up to destroy their mind said, Father, as they fulfill the calling, O God, that you have placed upon their life. You said in your word that we must seek he first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto us, God. As these students, God, are seeking you, God, I pray, O God, that you'll continue to do a new thing in their life, Father, because you are the one that is able. Lord, I pray for healing, mighty God, because you are Jehovah Rea. You are our healer. I pray, oh God, that you'll provide for them because you are Jehovah Rapha. You are our provider. Continue to be their Jehovah Shalom. Continue to be the God who is their peace. The omnipresent God who is always with them. Just as Moses said that he will not go without your presence. Mighty God, these students will not go without your presence. You are omniscient God. You know everything about them. And Lord, I pray, Father, that you'll continue to give them strength strength. Continue to provide for them, God, in every area. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. My title today is Never Give Up. And this comes to us from Exodus chapter 3, verse 7 to 8. And I'm working with the team, trust in the Lord. We should trust in the Lord always. Exodus chapter 7, verse 8. Chapter 3, verse 7 to 8 says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrow, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptian, and to bring them up out of that land unto a land, and a large flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hamarites, the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And I'm sure you will remember the story of how Joseph was sold into slavery by his jealous brothers and was taken down all in the purpose of God to the land of Egypt. And to cut a long story short, how he came to prominence in the land and how Pharaoh made him prime minister. Then through a miraculous sequence of events, you will recall he was reunited with his family and they were all brought to Egypt to live with Joseph. And the book of Genesis closes with the whole people of Israel, around 70 in all. By the time we get to Exodus chapter 3, however, the picture is very different. A period of 430 years saw the children of Israel grow like rabbits. From a family of 70 to over 600,000 men only, it is estimated that up to 3 million Israelites were in Egypt. And the Bible says that there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And this new Pharaoh was intimidated by the people of Israel dwelling in his land and set out to cut them back down to size. So he took action. He enslaved the Israelites, forced them to cut straw, make bricks and labor on the pyramids. But the more he afflicted the Israelites, the more they grew. So he instructed all Hebrews midwives, once a boy in Israel was born, he should be put to death. And this is the situation Israel is in when we come to Exodus chapter 3. Because of these reasons found in scripture, we should trust in the Lord always. 
The first reason is the Lord has seen the affliction of his people, meaning God has seen the divine compassion of his people. Affliction means something which causes trouble or distress. Physical and mental suffering seen comes from the root word to see, which means to perceive with the eyes, discern visually. Man looks at things physical, but when God looks at things, he sees them both physically and spiritually. What are some of the afflictions? The first thing comes to mind is suffering and tribulation. But today I want us to look at these two afflictions in scripture, the affliction of the wicked. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 6 that the affliction of the wicked are multiplied. Not only are the affliction of the wicked multiplied, but are often sudden. Student, there is no warning for these natural disasters such as hurricane and earthquake. Likewise, when God is going to pour out his anger, his judgment, his wrath, it will be sudden. It will be like a shaking in the enemy's camp and they will be swallowed up. Likewise, there are earthquakes happening in diverse places, but God is still in control. There was recently an earthquake in Jamaica and I was worried for my families and friends, but I was praying at the same time, knowing that God is in control. I am here to encourage you, never give up. Likewise, in Exodus chapter 14, verse 21 to 29, God divine compassion for the children of Israel. Then he said to Moses, stretch your hands over the sea. And all night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through. Hallelujah, the sea on dry ground with all with the wall of water to their right and to their left. The leaders and the spiritual guidance from God was displayed through Moses. Likewise, is there any dead situation in your life? Is there any Red Sea situation that you are saying, God, I cannot go through. I am here to encourage you to never give up and trust in the Lord always. Glory be to God. Student, whatever you're going through, it's not forever. The Bible reminds us that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Glory be to God. He said that it ends in joy and blessedness. Hallelujah. Matthew 5 verse 35 verse 3 to 12 said, sometimes we have to go, all, the, all we have to do is to look the devil in the face and rejoice. All that we are going through is not just like that, but it ends in joy and blessedness. I want us to understand that our affliction are purpose driven. So therefore the question is asked, what are the purpose of our affliction? It produces endurance, Romans 5 verse 3 to 5, which produces character. It makes us what God wants us to be. It molds us like the clay in the potter's hand we might, so that we might be able to portray God's glory. Our affliction also produces hope, hope for deliverance. Hallelujah. Deliverance from fear. There are so many times that we are fearful of things that we are going through in life. But the Bible reminds us in Isaiah 41 verse 10a, Do not fear for I am with you. Do not be afraid for I am your God. Hallelujah. Produces hope to deliver us from evil. Isaiah 54 verse 17 says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. Moses followed the leadership and the spiritual guidance of the Lord. And we see this in verse 26. The Lord said unto Moses, Raise your hand over the sea to make the waters fall and cover the Egyptian chariots and horsemen. Student, our 
affliction produces hope, hope for blessing. Deuteronomy 28 says, we are blessed in the field, going out and coming in. In our storehouses, we are blessed. Student, our affliction produces hope, hope for healing. The word of God said in Isaiah 53 verse 5, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. I want you to believe today that God is able to heal you and I'm saying to you all today, never give up. He healed us from any kind of sickness. Maybe you are not the one that is healed, but you have family members, you have people that you know, you have friends that may be in need of healing, in need of healing, but we have to believe on their behalf. He wants to heal us from depression. There are so many times that we are going through college and we are doing different things in ministry, even in our community, and we get depressed because of different things that might happen. But I want to tell you to be encouraged and trust in the Lord always and never give up. Hallelujah. Our affliction produces hope for spiritual care. We have to take care of ourselves. Students, some spiritual self-care practice includes prior meditating and worship and spending time learning from mentors and families or friends. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Never give up. Trust in the Lord always. The children of Israel could not enter Canaan just like that. They could not enter the promised land just like that. Do you think that they were in Egypt by chance? No. God had a purpose and a plan through all their affliction. He was in the midst of it. Likewise, God is in the midst of our situation. All our affliction, all everything that we are going through, God is in the midst. And he wants us to be reminded of his word, to trust in him always and never give up the omnipresent God is always with us Moses said that he will not go without the presence of God and that goes for us today just the same because he's the same yesterday today and forever and nothing is impossible for him to do trust in the Lord always and never give up and I want to share my second reason why we should trust in the Lord always. The, 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 the scriptures say, the Lord have heard the cry of his people, meaning he is available to deliver us out of any situation that we are in. What are some of the cries? The cry of deep distress, hallelujah. When we are in trouble, we cry out to God. When I am faced with challenging situation, I cry out to God because he's the only one that can help me. Likewise, we must cry out to God when we are faced with troubling situation. When we are in financial distress, we must cry out to God. Many of you or some of you may be going through challenging time in paying your tuition and you're saying, God, where am I going to get this money from? But I'm here here to tell you that God is the one that will take care of it. In Bible college, I would have heard the student numerous of times mention that God, it is your will. That means it is your bill. Trust God to take care of every financial distress that you're going through. Hallelujah. When we are in broken relationship, it could be with our family members, let me tell you something, trust in the Lord, because he said, I have heard the cry. Today, God, I've heard your cry and he will come down to deliver you. 
The, the psalmist says in Psalm 61, hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. Trust in the Lord and never give up. Hallelujah. Pharaoh increases the labor on the children of Israel. But the more he afflicted them, the more they grew. Your body may be afflicted, but you are not dead. There are different kind of sickness that may afflict our body, but we still have hope for healing because we trust in God. Hallelujah. Psalms 107 verse 6 said, Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. The cry for help against war in our communities, in our country, in our family. There are so many things going on. We see all these things on the news, but as Christians, as ministers in training, we have to cry out on their behalf. We have to cry out on our family behalf. We have to cry out on our community behalf. We have to cry out to God on our country behalf if we want to see deliverance from these things. Hallelujah. The cry for help against child abuse. There are children that are being used, misused and abused and we are crying out to God on their behalf. Glory be to God. The characteristics of a cry. It is powerful. Hallelujah. When the cry is passionate, it is powerful. James 5, 16, B said, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Hallelujah. When the cry is passionate, it is intense. Hallelujah. Psalm 17, verse 1 and 6 said, I call unto you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ears to hear my prayer. Let me tell you something. God is listening. God wants us to cry out from our heart to him. Hallelujah. Likewise, when the cry is urgent, it gets the attention of God. It moves the hand of God. There are so many times I was faced with challenging situation and I cry out to God and things begun to come in places. Likewise, when you cry out to God, things will fall in places. It will move the hands of God. Uh, can I tell you to just trust in God and never give up? When God hand move, things come into place. Door open, door close, breakthrough come into place. God is a way maker, the songwriter declares. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. He's a light in the darkness. And I am here to encourage you, never give up. Hallelujah. So many times in Jamaica, I wanted to give up because things were not going the way I wanted. Hallelujah. But I never give up. I trust in the Lord always. And I am saying to you today to trust in the Lord always. Hallelujah. And I just want to share my testimony before coming to America. I remember going to the embassy twice in Jamaica because I would have received two internship opportunity to complete my internship in America. The first time I went to the embassy, I did not get through. The second time I went to the embassy, I did not get through. I wanted to come to this fancy church in America to do my internship and learn from these spiritual leaders and these people that God would have placed in my life, but it did not work out those times. But I said, God, I will trust you. I said, God, I will trust you. It was not easy wasting my money to go to the embassy only to be denied. But let me tell you something. God's timing is perfect. And when God's timing is perfect, everything will flow. Everything will come in places. And I remember going to the embassy in 
in 2022 and everything started to flow. I remember getting my visa to come and study here in America. Even the consultant at the embassy complimented me. Let me tell you something. When God opened the door, when God opened the doors in your life for you to go through it, everything will flow. You will not even have financial issue. I did not have any issue completing anything that God wanted to for me to do the third time around I got my visa and I'm saying to you to trust in the Lord during those time I had to sit and learn from spiritual leaders that God placed in my life I take their encouragement and I apply it to my life sometimes it was not easy to apply those things but I learned to trust in God I learned to be humble I learned to be patient and know that when the time is right, God will make it happen. There, I heard this pastor says that anything that God cannot do does not exist. And I'm here to tell you to activate your faith now. Have faith now. Prove God to his word. And I say, God, I'm going to prove you to your word. Things did not work in my timing, but I know your timing is perfect. Likewise, I am saying to you to trust in the Lord always and never give up. We are not a victim of circumstances. Hallelujah. The psalmist rep- re- um Reflect on Psalm 61, verse 1 to 20. He said, hear my cry, O Lord. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry out to thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to thy rock that is higher than I. Hallelujah. How does God deliver us by encamping around us? Psalms 34. Four, verse 7 said the angels of the Lord encamp around those who fear him hallelujah and he delivered them by giving his angels charge over us lest we dash our foot against the stone by lifting up a standard for us hallelujah Isaiah 59 verse 19 b said when the enemy shall come in like a flood the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him encourage yourself in the Lord learn from the leaders your mentor those people that the Lord has placed in your life so that you can build your spiritual life so that you can grow and mature in Christ hallelujah this songwriter says, I am no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am surrounded by the arms of the Father. I am surrounded by a songs of deliverance. We have been liberated from our bondage. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. Hallelujah. I am here to tell you to encourage yourself in the Lord and never give up what Whatever you're going through, whatever you're waiting on the Lord to work out in your life, it is possible because he said in his word that he is the same yesterday, today and forever, meaning nothing is impossible for him to do as you go through this term. I pray that God will continue to give you strength. I pray that God will continue to anoint you and to keep you and to bless you financially, spiritually, mentally and emotionally in everything that he has called you to do and remember that God will take care of you. God bless you and thank you very much for listening.